Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, the Silver Fox. And hold your breath, folks, I'm going to stun you. An official who works for the SNP government as a financial advisor on policy has been lying. I know, who would have thought it? This particular guy is called Gary Gillespie, uh, and he's claiming um, that because of all the money spent on HS2 in England, this would not be reflected in the Barnet Consequentials for Scotland. That's what he's saying. Uh, but it turns out, of course, that this is a load of old rubbish. It's that um, the amount of money spent in transport infrastructure in England is reflected in the Barnet Consequentials as per the legal agreement to all of that. It's just not labelled up as being a transport specific uh, addition to it because obviously they don't say, here's the money you must spend on transport. They say, here's the money that we're giving you as your share of transport spending in England. How you spend it is up to yourselves. But of course, the SNP won't be spending that on transport. And so this is why he's making this ridiculous claim of the massive underfunding uh, of, of uh, transport spending in Scotland. It's not. It's a choice. And the SNP have chosen to spend elsewhere. So he's being called out for it and made to look like an absolute buffoon. No change there then. Let's have a look. So SNP government advisor fueling fake news. As he says, no Barnet funding from HS2 spending. Even though we know there is. The rules are very explicit. And if anyone is going to be breaking rules, it'll be the SNP. It won't necessarily be the British government or the, U the Westminster government, should I say. Because the Westminster government no, they'll be held to account. And so they don't. So when infrastructure is spent in Britain, that allowance as part of the Barnet Agreement goes into the pot, as it were. And then that gets chucked up to Scotland each year. So it's a load of rubbish to suggest that because they're spending billions on this train that will benefit only England, that uh, Scotland doesn't get any benefit from it. They do in the terms of cold, hard cash which the SNP then waste. Gary Gillespie claimed Scotland would receive no consequentials from transport infrastructure projects down south, but that, of course, has been challenged by everyone who knows what they're talking about, unlike Gillespie. The Scottish Government's own economic advisor has been accused of fueling fake news after footage emerged of him saying Scotland would receive no Barnet consequential funding from HS2 spending in England. The pro-union think tank, These Islands, called on Gary Gillespie to debunk misinformation when presented with it. Mr Gillespie made the claim during a forum with Scotonomics, a group co-founded by former SNP councillor Karen Van Sweden, who was forced to quit the party amid a racism row. Uh, yes, he was the one that kept on about the, uh, if I remember, it was, um, I believe, a Bangladeshi woman who she called a new Scot. Well, she's an immigrant. So yes, she is a new Scot. But this one didn't like the term. But love, you're a new Scot. Deal with it. You're not born here. You don't have a history here. You can't trace your ancestry back to the, you know, Culloden. So uh, yeah, you're fairly new. Anyway, during the discussion, which took place last year, an audience member asked Mr Gillespie if he could help explain what Barnet consequentials would be coming to Scotland in relation to HS2 and Crossrail spending elsewhere in the UK. Um, and Crossrail is the new line that goes east to west or west to east, depending which way you want to go, through London. Um, it's a major undertaking. It's using partially current lines, building new lines, whole new station uh, and things like that. So it's, it's a major infrastructure project, but it's just simply because there's lots of north-south lines, very few uh, east-west lines. Incidentally, the Northern Line is the line that goes the furthest south. Bing. Anyway, getting back to this, he responds by saying, I don't think there is Barnet consequentials for HS2. And when the audience member states HS2 will be based in the southern half of England, uh, it was originally going to go all the way up, I believe, originally to Newcastle, was the original plans, certainly up to uh, Leeds and Manchester. But now it's uh, London to Birmingham. So hundreds of billions of pounds to shave about 25 minutes off the journey to Birmingham. Yeah, I don't get it either. Anyway, 
Uh, anyway, he said uh, he repeated his claim when presented with that. And at that point, another co-founder of Scotonomics, William Thompson, states the UK government was not giving Barnet consequentials to Wales because it would benefit from HS2. Yeah, Birmingham isn't that close to Wales, though, is it? And that does seem a bit weird as well. But I don't think Wales gets that much by way of, Bar of Barnet consequentials. Anyway, not sure what the justification is for Scotland, they said. However, the claim has been challenged by these islands. Because, of course, it has. It's a load of old rubbish. The group points to a UK government paper that confirms Scotland receives 100% in Barnet funding from HS2. In other words, if their share is, say, 30% of whatever the, the, funding, the funding in England is, Scotland gets 30%, uh, you know, added to the Barnet consequentials, they will have had the full 30%, 100% of that 30%. Uh, the funding had also been confirmed in the House of Commons by Parliamentary Under Secretary for State for Scotland, John Lamont, MP. He said last year the United Kingdom government are responsible for heavy rail infrastructure in Wales. Conversely, it's a devolved responsibility in Scotland. So the Scottish government received Barnet based funding. Wales don't because it's the uh, UK or the, the Westminster government pays for everything in Wales because of the, they don't have the devolution to the same level. He said that is consistent with the funding arrangements for all other policy areas that are reserved in Wales but devolved in Scotland. And that's basically it. So because it's a devolved matter, it gets added automatically to the Barnet formula. They get the money. Gary Gillespie doesn't like this. Gary Gillespie wants to make differences. Gary Gillespie is stirring the pot. Uh, these islands react to the video saying, unfortunate to say the least, that Gary Gillespie did not know HS2 spending in England generates Full Barnet consequentials for Scotland. He really should be debunking misinformation, not fueling it. Sam Taylor, who runs a think tank, called Mr Gillespie's statement uh, genuinely extraordinary and very worrying. And he accused him of throwing fuel on a popular Scottish nationalist myth. Well, myths is all they've got. They can't tell the facts because the facts would destroy every argument they have. Oh, England are bastards and doing this. England are terrible and doing that. Oh, look at the awful of the English. Now. And then when you actually tell them the truth, they go, well, yeah, 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 but we can't tell people that. Otherwise, we're pointless. We, we cease to exist as a political party. Anyway, Angus, uh, Scottish Conservative councillor Ian Gall said, desperately worrying that Scottish government chief economist couldn't debunk the ridiculous but widespread separatist myth that no Barnet consequentials are triggered by HS2. What a sorry state of affairs. And it fuels separatist grievances, of which they have many, and none of which are genuine. Mr Gillespie has been the Scottish Government's chief economic advisor since 2011. It does seem, therefore, that he's over-promoted. If he can't, uh, doesn't understand those principles, and perhaps some time reflecting on another career. You know, uh, he should be pursuing other directions, and should be doing so when he's given his cards on Friday, I suspect. Uh, the Scottish Government spokeswoman said HS2 is factored into the Barnet settlement. However, as the Scottish Government does not receive a full breakdown of the consequentials at programme level from the UK Government, except in certain circumstances, it's not possible to determine how much is received from programmes such as HS2. OK, do you want it broken down? Is that what you're saying? You want it broken down? So here's your Barnet money. Boom, 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 boom. Here's the money for transport. You must spend it on transport. Here's your money for health. You must spend it on health. Oh, that's the last thing they want. Oh, no, 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 no. They don't want that. Uh, anyway, the chief economist was absolutely clear. She said that he wasn't certain as to the situation around consequentials for him at HS2. He may well have been certain that he wasn't uh, sure about it. But that's not what he said. That's not what he said. He lied. Because, you know, got to create those differences. Coming up. When you have their own economic advisor not understanding the principles by which the Barnet consequentials work and then outright lying to people that they're not getting their full and fair share and therefore stoking grievance where there should be none because the truth is that the UK government is giving its full share but they just don't like it and if they can find anywhere where they can put the boot in I suppose that's what they're going to do. But he must now be, first of all, forced to apologise in public, forced to admit he got it wrong, and then resign. And, you know, there's got to be a price to pay. If you're going to do this, if you're going to create all these problems, 
you've got to be prepared to lose your job over it if you're going to lie to people. You're a government advisor, and now you're a liar. How can any advice ever be taken you know, at face value again? These people are morons. You should be fired immediately. Anyway, I'll stop there. Thank you very much for watching. Do please hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, leave a like, leave a comment. Please share the video. And until next time, stay safe, stay well, and I will speak to you later. Bye.